Hello everyone, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna do the first build talk on the speaker that I built last week. So I wanna make these build talk videos a normal thing. So the week after I put out a build video where I'm not talking at all in the video, uh, I'll put out one of these videos where I go over why I built the speaker, how I built the speaker, what I used to build the speaker, and hopefully answer some questions that you guys have and the questions that you leave in the comments. Um, yeah, this will be a good way for us to, to talk and, and uh, talk about ideas. Well, I'll talk about the ideas. You guys can talk down in the comments. That'd be good. Okay, so let's talk about design. So my goals with this speaker were purely simplicity. So this is actually the same design as the first speaker I ever built, back when I knew nothing about speaker design, speaker building, and I really didn't know anything about woodworking either. All I really wanted out of this speaker was to learn. When I designed the speaker, it had to meet a few requirements. So these are my goals. I'm gonna list them now. Goal number one. So I wanted this speaker to be powered. So the audio amp and all the electronics and everything are all inside the speaker, as opposed to a passive speaker where the audio amp and everything is outside the speaker. Number two was that I had to be able to build the enclosure with the limited tools that I had at that time. Um, so all I had was a circular saw and a drill. And that was pretty much it. A little hand saw too. That was, that's it. And number three was that the woodworking itself had to be really simple because my skills were really simple. <laughs> so you might have noticed that there was something missing off that list. I didn't put like amazing, spectacular, mind-blowing sound on the list of goals for the speaker. Um, I knew my skills weren't very high, my knowledge wasn't very high. So my goals with this building the speaker was to learn. Um, and more importantly, to build a foundation of knowledge that I could build upon in the future. So that's all I wanted to do. It was a test. This was a speaker test. All right, and I actually want to talk about that for a second. Um, I know some of you out there are really good speaker builders, and that's freaking awesome. Um, but I know even more of you out there have never built a speaker before or are very new to speaker building. And to you out there, <laughs> um, I just want to say, while you're researching how to build speakers and the information that you need to be able to build speakers, you're gonna hear a lot of, you have to do this and you can't do this. A lot of rules. Also, the fact, a lot of people say that the quality in sound is the most important part of building speakers. And I just wanna say, when you build speakers, none of that matters. Like, you're building your speaker for yourself. So, if you, want the aesthetics to be the number one thing, if you want the size to be the number one thing, um, if you want a particular wood to be the number one thing, uh, a technique to be the number one thing, if you want to test out a different enclosure design, that could be the number one thing. Sound doesn't have to be the most important thing when you're building speakers, and it's all up to you. There's, there's just gonna be a lot of, you have to do this, and I'm telling you, you don't have to do that. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Experiment, have fun. It's all about fun. It's all about just, you know, uh, creating something, and something that you'll be able to experience afterwards. Whatever that experience is, is up to you. So, you know, do your thing. That's all I'm trying to say. All right. You get it. Okay, so as far as the materials, with simplicity being the goal, I decided to use uh, fence posts. Not posts, fence boards, fence pickets, fence boards. The redwood fence boards. Um, and the reason why I use that, because one, they're cheap. Uh, two, um, they look good. Redwood just naturally looks pretty awesome. And three, they're actually already the correct, or correct, they were already the width that I wanted for this project, so I didn't need to rip them down the sides. Only having limited tools, I didn't want to make, I wanted to make as few cuts as possible. So, fence boards worked out well. Now, redwood is kind of a soft wood. It's definitely not the best wood acoustically. Harder, more dense woods tend to be a little bit better. Not a little bit, they're better, straight up. Um, but. If you want to use Redwood, use Redwood. It's up to you. I use Redwood and it sounds fine. No big deal. Um, but yeah, Redwood fence. That's how I made this. Now, only having a circular saw, I didn't want to use any crazy, fancy 
you know, joints to put this all together. So I just stuck with simple butt joints. Uh, you can see these. It's all just wood butted up against each other with glue. Um, and it's strong, it's, you know, it's fine. It, it's fine, it's fine. So the size of this enclosure was determined, number one, by the width of the fence boards, uh, and number two, by the width that I wanted the speaker to be. Now, this enclosure for these woofers, are, it's probably too small, it is too small, for kind of that low end sound. You can make it bigger if you wanted to keep it a sealed speaker, so there's no portholes. Uh, you make it a little bigger, that'll help the low end. Also adding port, port tubes, bass reflex tubes, will help increase that bottom end as well. I have links to both of those types of en enclosures. Uh, I have links to videos that I've done on both of those types of enclosures. Uh, I'll put a link right up here. Uh, you can go check those out. Um, get a little more information. As far as finishing, I sealed the wood with uh, Danish oil, just the original Danish oil, and then I hit it with a few coats of matte clear spray paint, just like Rust-Oleum spray paint. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk about components. And I'll have links to all the components I use in the speaker down in the description. Go check those out. So for the two woofers, I use Dayton DSAs. Now these are the aluminum cone version of the DS series. I've never used these before. This is the first time I've used these. Um, I like them. I want to try them in obviously different enclosure, different situation. But they're so far they're pretty cool. I like the look of them. I like like the matte look of them. That's a big plus for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to do a little more testing, but so far they're pretty good. The tweeter I used is a Dayton ND16FA, and I love this tweeter. Um, I use it in a lot of my projects. I like how small it is, but despite its size, it offers huge sound. It, it really puts out a lot of volume. It's also nice because it fits in a real wide variety of projects since it's so small. Um, it's a good one. It's a good one. The amplifier I used in this guy is a KB215. It can put out 30 watts, 15 into two channels. It has built-in Bluetooth. You can do aux in to it. It's just, it's a no-brainer. It's a real easy, awesome little amp. It's good stuff. Oh yeah, so with the KB amps, remember you need to get the function cable kit when you order the amp. Uh, the cable kit will include your power switch cable, not the switch, but the cable. Uh, it'll have the volume pot, uh, it'll also have, oh, and the aux input. They're all important things, you kind of need them. So get that, remember, function cable kit. There's links, get the links. You also need a switch, a power adapter, and a power jack to round out the goodies for this project. Um, yeah. All right, so now the crossover. So keeping with the simplicity uh, goal in mind. The crossover is so simple. It's literally just one capacitor on the tweeter. It's a 4.7 UF capacitor and that'll start the roll off uh, of the high pass frequencies at around uh, 5600 Hertz. Yeah and that's that's it. All we're doing is uh, kind of taking out the low frequencies from the tweeter. So it's only getting 5,600, well, a little bit lower than 5,600, but 5,600 and, and up. Um, the woofers are straightforward. Uh, they break up around uh, 1,500. Um, so there is definitely some, some overlap there, but uh, remember our goal wasn't excellent sound. It was just good sound, or it was just sound. Uh, we're, we're, we're learning about capacitors. We're learning about you know woodworking. We're learning about how to wire it all together. Uh, we're learning some um, uh, finishing techniques. Yeah, it's, it's an all over thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do next in this video. <laughs> oh yeah, comments. Let me look at some comments. Um, but it didn't show how it sounds. So next week I will be doing a sound test video on how it sounds. Um, so stay tuned for that. So uh, the future, this is a little update. My vision for this channel is to do a build, my, my traditional build videos. The next week to do one of these, the uh, build talk videos, and the week after to do a sound test video. And I want to get a little better with uh, doing the sound tests, maybe doing some spectrum testing and, and stuff like that, uh, and talking about that and how to do it. I got some equipment in. Uh, 
a few months ago, to be honest, but I uh, got some equipment in that will be able to uh, help me with the sound tests. And if you guys, if you have suggestions, please give me suggestions on how to make these build videos better. Um, what specifically do you want to know about each build? I'm trying to cover it all, but I don't know. The other idea I had, and maybe you guys can help me with this, should I do a re-edit of the original build video and do like commentary over the top of it? Is that something you guys want to see? I don't know. I don't know. I need your help. I, I need it. Help me. Help me out. Thank you. All right, so the most uh, thumbed up comment was circular saw and a corded drill or minimal tools question mark next time try a handsaw and a brace instead um or i could use a a, a rock and um a bigger rock okay so uh the next one is uh, how did you calculate the box volume for this project so uh, i i didn't <laughs> um it, it it's it, it, there are ways to calculate box volume for your specific speaker. There's calculators on the internet that'll help you do that. Just just actually Google uh, uh, a speaker box volume calculator. You'll probably get something through that. Uh, um, but this one, this was all just, like I said, design. Um, yeah, I, I'm answering my own questions again. I'm sorry. Here, I'll find something better. I'm wondering how you wired up the tweeter. I wired up the tweeter. We already, we already went over that. Your saw blade was backwards, question mark? Um, no, it wasn't. Circular saw blades go like this because there's a, there's like the plate, right? That uh, the circular saw lays on and then the saw blade goes like this so that the wood gets pinched between the plate and the teeth of the saw. That's that's how that works, a little, little uh, simple, yeah, okay. Um, you're back, <laughs> again. I am, sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to do more videos. I'm trying, I'm trying. All right, questions, any questions? Will you have plans for this one? I will not have plans. Well, I might, maybe someday I'll have plans for this one. I don't have plans to have plans for this one <laughs> right now. Um, we'll see. All right, uh, let's see if there's anything any, anymore. Oh, here's, okay, so it looks great, except I would have used a socket head screw instead of those drywall screws to hold in the drivers. Yeah, um, this is all I had. <laughs> um, I, I think it looks janky too. Uh, it's not great, but I mean, the idea was to show you that it's it's not that hard to build a speaker. You literally take a fence post, cut it up, glue it together, and throw a speaker together. Cut a few holes in it. it it's really not that hard. You guys can do it. I promise. With like fifty dollars in tools and uh, a, a f you know ninety dollars in components of fence. And, and you're good. You're good to go. You can do it. I promise you can do it. You can do it. All right, I, I'm gonna cut it there. Um, in future build videos, give me your questions, man. Give me your questions. I'll read them off. Maybe if they're real good, I'll, I'll put your name in there. I don't know if, you, if, that's, if you guys want that. I don't know. Oh, so much unknown. I'm exhausted. Um, I hope this is okay. I hope this is okay video. They'll get better, I promise. I promise they'll get better. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Um, I have a Patreon. I got an Instagram. I got a website. There's build plans and kits on that website. Uh, go check it out. All the links are down below and maybe up here. I don't know. They're everywhere. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. All right. Peace. I'm going to stand up now. I got a new mic. This is a new mic. Hopefully the sound sounds better. Hopefully it worked. I, I'm hoping it works. But I can't do my normal walk. Well, I guess I can do my normal walk. All right, bye.